mothers always dream and make plans about their kids. But because we couldn't plan anything as we were so focused on her disease and its treatment. And Sabina's physical pain became moral suffering for all of the family. As her peers were playing in the yard, she was just looking on and grieving. The disease, which snuck up unnoticed, was worsening day by day, despite treatment and without hope for improvement from doctors. The doctors said that the disease was incurable. However, the parents did not abandon any attempts to save their child. Despite everything, they were looking for a way. At first, Dr. Ali said that it would take some time to recover. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, chronic inflammation of joints of unknown etiology, characterized by progressive course, mostly met in adolescents under 16. It leads to rigidity and even disability if improperly treated. Because of the inflammatory process in joints, broken metabolism, it distracts the neurocartilaginous tissue. During exacerbation, temperature increases, symmetrical pains in the joints, edema appears, can hit both large and small joints. They usually hurt and swell. Anemia, neutrophilic leukemia are usually revealed in general blood tests. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate reaches 40-60 mm per second. For the rehabilitation of such patients without taking any analgesics or hormonal medicines and without being dependent on them is only possible by the method of bioregulatory medicine, which is the only way in the world. It happened for the first time when she was four. She had fever and pain in the mornings, and her legs were swollen. She woke up one morning, tried to get up, but said that she couldn't walk. So for 10 days she couldn't walk, not even make a step. She made a couple of steps by the evening, but there was still pain. Does it hurt today? We took her to the 45th hospital, where blood tests were taken from her heel. I was very worried about the analysis. When I asked the nurse for the results, she refused to answer and redirected me to the doctor. In the beginning, they told us that it was caused by her kidneys, therefore the joints were swollen. We were preoccupied by the treatment of the kidneys for the whole week, but neither the temperature went down nor the pain stopped. A week later, we went to the hospital in Sumgait. There, three days later, the medications worked, the pain disappeared, her temperature dropped and she started walking again. The joy turned premature, the disease reactivated. Every month we visited Baku for a checkup, and the doctor would say the disease was incurable. He said that it's almost impossible to cure it, and she must take the medication all her life, and there was no other cure for it. All autoimmune diseases go through this process, leading to disability after 10 to 15 years if the patient only gets allopathic treatment. The therapeutic difference of the bioregulatory medicine is precisely in the approach to treatment and the patient. If necessary, we resort to allopathic methods. Don't think that we deny it all as this is impossible. Simply put, the allopathic treatment of such patients yields almost no effect. I first saw Dr. Ali on TV and listened to him say that their treatment and medication were absolutely harmless. 
This treatment doesn't include hormones and painkillers, and I thought that the chemical medicines she was taking at that time harmed her anyway. So we decided to visit Dr. Ali. Joint tumors, contractures, and rigid movements were present even though the proportions didn't match her age. Decelerations were also observed. They refused treatment since the child was already dependent on hormones and it was impossible to stop those immediately. Also taking into account the long-term nature of our method, they decided to reject treatment. During the treatment, the doctor noted that this kind of pain was possible. She was only six, and it was too hard to bear. And because she wanted to go back to school, we decided to give her pills again in order to reduce pain so that she could. If the patient can sleep at night, then we would restrict painkillers during the day, no matter how severe the pain. The fact is that when taking painkillers, neither doctor nor patient can determine which parts are damaged. Doctors are only able to find this out once all other organs have completely shut down. Parents could not stand her pain, so they decided to return to traditional treatment. Although later they realized the mistake, but the child's health was already damaged. Sabina had already been in bed for two years. When we went to Dr. Ali, he asked her to stand up to check her condition. She couldn't even stand for a while. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry, my dear. Everything will be okay. She cannot. Uh, lie down. Lie down. She had such severe pain that she couldn't even use her foot to step in order to let the doctor check on her. The patient returned after five years when her status had sharply deteriorated. She has since doubled her dosage due to contractures, which are a lack of movement in the muscles and rigidness appearing in the joints. Sweetie, can you turn slightly, please, and tell me when it hurts? Large doses of hormonal medicines can lead to osteoporosis. Her knee and hip joints no longer flexed more than 90 degrees, and both of her elbows remained bent, so she couldn't hold anything in her hands. The child was completely immobilized in bed. Then we proceeded with the full treatment of injections, and medications, followed by physiotherapy. During the initial stage, only drainage detoxification was performed, i.e. cleansing the body of toxins. At home, parents were asked to give her enemas and intravenous infusions for drainage, both of which were prescribed. After five to six weeks, we examined the child, and already during the second examination, the severe pain had almost passed, although contractures on the joints still persisted. She said that she was able to walk already, but if only the joints would flex. And at this stage, we've already started using homeocyniatry, which are traditionally applied to such patients by inserting needles into the circumference of the joints. We have started with physiotherapy and rehabilitation to flex the joints and stop muscle contractures. Long-term weekly osteopathic treatment was prescribed for 20 to 25 days. Then we decided to give a six-week break, which afterwards the second course of treatment began, where the joints had increased their flexibility by 30 to 40 percent. Approximately two months after, she finally began walking again due to the treatment. Come here, come here, come to me. You can do it. Atta girl, that's right. Even more. You can do it. Good. 
Due to physiotherapy and her attempts to walk, the joints finally flexed. The treatment of this patient is still ongoing. Some joints aren't fully flexible yet, so an additional course of treatment is required. God willing, the next treatment after that will be necessary only in about a year or two. Now, try to stand up and sit. Now, hands. Now, lift your feet. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, can you raise your legs? and move your legs like you're riding a bicycle. Well done! Get up! In order to raise a patient to their feet from the bed takes a large team of about five to eight people. And all of this is the result of their teamwork. They say that every misfortune has its benefits, even if the disease took away Sabina's most carefree time in life, it gave her an important dream. Who knows, maybe we're talking about the most famous specialist in this field in the future. I want to become a doctor. <laughs> <laughs>